Hello everybody, I'm some loudmouth on the internet with an opinion. Let's take a journey back in time to the early 2000s. Famous satirist Mike Judge, creator of cult favorites such as King of the Hill, Office Space, Beavs and Butthead, was working on a movie for 20th Century Fox. Originally scheduled for release in 2005, it suffered numerous delays. The studio reportedly was so ashamed of the movie, they not only did they delay it, they ended up giving it only the bare minimum they could, giving it no promotion whatsoever and an extremely limited theatrical release in early 2006. They did seemingly everything in their power to make sure that this movie came out and and went from theaters without attracting any major attention. Hmm, a movie 20th Century Fox thought was beneath them. Keep in mind, 20th Century Fox, which was the creator of many critically reviled movies that decade, Fox was willing to promote, give wide releases, and put their names proudly across all kinds of terrible comedies. Jeez, how bad did Mike Judge have to screw up for the studio to be that ashamed of it? I mean... What made the studio not want to make the $20 million budget of this movie back? People who heard of this movie simply assumed, oh my god, it has to be terrible. But, want to know the really shocking thing? This movie doesn't suck at all. Not only does it not suck, it is one of the most brilliant and funny satirical masterpieces ever made. That movie is simply known as Idiocracy. Idiocracy is the story of Average Joe, played by Luke Wilson, who volunteers for an army experiment, forcing him to cryogenically sleep for 500 years. He wakes up in a dystopian future, where the average intelligence of the population has dramatically fallen. It's a world where an amazingly dim-witted public are placated with fatty food and brainless entertainment to not see the world around them is falling apart. Oh, you just... Go away, Baton! While being too stupid and self-centered to care. Where politicians are bumbling figureheads who have no clue what they are doing, instead looking for more intelligent people than them in order to fix the issues that their popular appeal can't. I give you my word! He's gonna fix the dust on where corporations shove ads in everyone's face to such an extent there is no escape from them. A world where environmental catastrophes plague society with no plan to fix them. In case you haven't already figured it out, this future world is actually a satire of our current one. It is filled with jokes left and right to both fun of the dumbing down of our current society. While it went in and out of theaters without seemingly any notice, on DVD the movie quickly became a cult classic, with many discovering what it is. Whenever the masses consume terrible products or support terrible policies, and all around in mass fail to use common sense, this movie is frequently brought up. Many see this movie's dystopian future as a real possibility. So why did Fox look at this movie and not want to jump? What was in this movie that Fox was scared of? One possibility, I think, is the way it portrays corporations. Sure, some of its attacks were only against fictional corporations like the fictional Brondo Corporation, a Gatorade-type corporation that in this future has bought out the FDA and the FCC and has come to replace water throughout society. They even go so far as to spray this Gatorade-like product on the crops. This causes a mass crop failure and a dust bowl. But Brondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. But it also features some hilarious swipes at current real ones. In order to make fun of the increasing sexualization of society, many corporations evolve over the centuries to become increasingly more profane and pornographic. Man, I could really go for a Starbucks, you know? Yeah, well, I really don't think we have time for a hand job, Joe. Carl's Jr.'s, the restaurant and fast food chain, or Hardee's as they're known in some parts, have been known for their incredibly sleazy ads, usually featuring some model eating their products. Knowing full well that model rarely does eat their crap food, because if she did, she wouldn't be such jerk-off material. Burger, fries, and a Coke. Don't bother me. I'm eating. The new spicy sourdough pepper jack burger at Carl's Jr. Your kids are starving. Carl's Jr. believes no child should go hungry. You are an unfit mother. Your children will be placed in the custody of Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. Fuck you. I'm eating. 
20th Century Fox makes lots of deals and cross promotions with lots of different other corporations, including many of the same corporations that Idiocracy so mercilessly satirizes. It's quite possible the reason why 20th Century Fox hid this movie was because some of this satire just hit way too close to home and they feel endangered some future cross promotions. It's possible they thought losing money on this movie was worth it if this movie could possibly damage any future cross promotions. But here's the thing though, Idiocracy is not wrong on this point, at all. 60 years ago, we had television shows where husbands and wives that lived happily together still slept in different beds. It was considered controversial in the mid-60s when the show Bewitched featured a husband and wife sleeping in the same bed. Now this airs on regular network television. Look how far we've come. I haven't come at all thanks to the cake teas. Is society now accepting things it used to not tolerate a sign of getting smarter or dumber? Is this a sign of society evolving or devolving, of progressing or regressing? That's an intelligent debate intelligent people can have, but likely not one 20th Century Fox wanted to be the center of. But definitely the most controversial thing about this movie is the movie's seemingly pro-eugenic stance. How did this happen? Evolution does not necessarily reward intelligence. With no natural predators to thin the herd, it began to simply reward those who reproduced the most and left the intelligent to become an endangered species. Having kids is such an important decision. We're just waiting for the right time. It's not something you want to rush into, obviously. No way. Shit, I'm pregnant again! I got too many damn kids! I thought you was on the pill or some shit. Hell no. I must have been thinking of Brittany. Brittany? No, you can't. Idiocracy seemingly makes the case that intelligent people who are socially conscious, think things through, and are smart enough to use basic necessities such as contraception, will eventually be outnumbered by idiots who fuck without thinking and thus produce far, far more children. The opening of this movie isn't just funny, it's also freaking terrifying just because of how plausible it seems. It is a myth in the public perception of how evolution works that evolution is some type of process that perfects organisms over millions and millions of years and is working to further perfect organisms into a more perfect state. In reality, evolution doesn't give a shit about what's better or worse. It cares only about one thing, how well an organism is adapted to its environment. If you were to judge two organisms by an arbitrary metric, say ability to climb a tree, you could reasonably judge judge a squirrel as being a superior organism to a dolphin. There is a good reason why human-like intelligence has so seldom evolved in the natural world. Intelligence can actually be a biological drawback. Large brains consume lots of calories. Not a problem in today's world where food is plentiful, but in the caveman days, that could be the difference between starving to death and not. Not to mention that in order to evolve a large brain cavity, humanity had to evolve much weaker jaws than our other great ape cousins. So basically, Basically, it was the slimmest of chances that environmental conditions led to us having brains as large as we do and intelligence as high as we have now. With an environment no longer harshly selecting only the most intelligent individuals to survive and pass on their genes, it totally makes sense that intelligence itself could eventually regress. Many on the political and cultural left have embraced this movie for its seemingly anti-corporate stance, and you'll very often hear comments from them about how Republican politicians or Republican voters are bringing this movie's universe to life. But when they do so, they misunderstand this movie's message. It, this movie does not show corporations as dumbing down the public. Quite the contrary, it shows the public dumbing down the corporations. This movie does not show society's fall as being top down. It clearly shows society's fall as being bottom up. Is the existence of corporations producing terrible, lowbrow garbage entertainment the fault of the corporations who created such content or of the public who pay to see it? Corporations have one job, to make money, and they make money by giving people what they want. Nobody held a gun to anyone's head and forced them to support such crap, lowbrow entertainment. This stuff succeeded because it appealed to lowbrow people, and it succeeded because there are a lot of lowbrow people. Some will argue and make excuses and say, oh, but they were manipulated through advertising. Well, yeah, and I say, so what? 
You are an adult living in a free country. Advertising and others can't manipulate you unless you allow yourself to be manipulated. In today's world, you can pull a device out of your pocket, access Google or Bing or other search engines, and learn anything you need to know at the click of a button. Thus, in today's world, your ignorance is your own fault. Some had high hopes that genetic engineering would correct this trend in evolution. But sadly, the greatest minds and resources were focused on conquering hair loss and prolonging erections. You see here how corporate funding on giving the public what they want, not what they need, is what ultimately drives down civilization. A lesser movie dealing with this subject would have had some sinister force behind the scenes, but there is no evidence such a force exists in Idiocracy's universe. Politicians and corporate leaders are portrayed as every bit as bumbling and foolish as the public they serve. They weren't sinisterly taking from the public, only following the public's misguided will. That fact hasn't gone unnoticed by many. Far-left websites such as Salon and Alternet have ran rather vicious articles against Idiocracy attacking its fans as well, because they recognize that this movie does not support their Marxist worldview. In their worldview, societal inequality is all part of the evils of capitalism and we're all fundamentally equal. It's only societal structures and an unfair top-down system that lead to a society where some people have more than others or accomplish more than others. Th this, w these articles were written many years after the movie came out, which only supports my notion that this is part of the reason why 20th Century Fox hid this movie. Back in 2014, author Matt Novick wrote an article for the website Paleo Future saying, Idiocracy is a cruel movie, and you should be ashamed for liking it. Why does he feel that way about Idiocracy? Well, let's dig in and find out. Idiocracy is the new cultural touchstone for discussing America's cultural and educational decline. I see references to the film in social media streams nearly every day. Hmm, I guess he's noticed. Do a quick search and you'll see people are referring to the film in some capacity about 5 to 10 times an hour on social media. In the movie, a nation of imbeciles sit around watching the fictional TV show, Ow oh My Balls, while furiously masturbating and eating garbage food. People have become completely dependent upon automation, including ro robo-medicine, and are too dumb to fix anything. Is this funny? Sure. As an over-the-top comedic dystopia, the movie is actually enjoyable, but the movie's introduction makes it an unnerving reference to toss around as our go-to insult. He then goes on to discuss and describe the beginning of the movie that I showed you earlier in the review. What's so wrong with this thinking? Unlike other films that satirize the media and the soul-crushing consequences of sensationalized entertainment, Idiocracy lays the blame at the feet of an undeserved target. Ooh, the poor while implicitly advocating a terrible solution, eugenics. The movie's underlying premise is a fundamentally dangerous and backward way to understand the world. Notice by citing eugenics and all the horrible things that were done in the name of eugenics in the past, he believes this is all the justification he needs to get away with saying that this movie's message is vile and untrue, but he doesn't really provide any kind of counter-argument against what this movie describes, that society could possibly get dumber and that society is moving in a less intellectual direction. He goes on. Idiocracy continues the great American tradition of producing media that bemoans the terrible state of America's collective intelligence. But as a piece of historical futurism, it has a worrisome message. We're frustrated by the world believing that encouraging smarter people to breed will somehow fix all our problems. But it simply isn't so. It's a distraction from institutionalized problems in our society. The problem isn't that stupid people read again, the poor, are having too many children. The problem is that we aren't living up to the ideals and promise we've been given to each generation of Americans that have become before us. A livable wage, paid maternity leave, proper funding for scientific research. These are the things a functional society are built upon. The ways that we can improve our world. We don't build a better society by getting more smart people to fuck each other. Mike Judge is not here to create propaganda for your socialist utopian ideology, Mr. Novak. The reason why people like Mr. Novak hate idiocracy is not because it's wrong, they hate it because it's true. Because idiocracy is a sharp-witted satirical attack on his worldview that all of society's problems are all caused by evil people at the top with their personal helicopters and whatnot, keeping the little guy down. You're in the wrong line, dumbass. This is the classic worldview of the underachiever who is looking for someone to blame. Hey, 
Maybe your problems are not caused by some invisible sinister force, whether it be corporate tyranny, institutionalized racism, patriarchy, what have you. Maybe you haven't achieved your goals because you haven't been using your head. Or maybe, just maybe, and this may sound harsh, you're not smart enough to do any better. You can call this movie's worldview elitist if you want, and to an extent it is, but I see no value in saying that satire can only be legitimate attacking people at the top. The whole, we should only punch up fallacy. Anyone who uses this argument is basically crying that they are angry that someone picked targets of satire that conflicts with their chosen ideology. When a homophobic religious preacher is caught in a gay brothel, or when a rich environmentalist drives around in a private jet that emits like a hundred times more carbon than the average man does in his entire life, it's okay to poke fun at their hypocrisy, but it's not okay to do it if it's for the common man? No. I don't agree with that one bit. The common man is every bit as much capable of being a lowlife and a hypocrite as anyone at the top, and they deserve just as much a satire as anyone else. In my earlier review of the movie Norm of the North, I note how stupid the movie's shoehorn environmentalist message is, having Norm want to stop some idiotic nonsensical conduct development in the Arctic, instead of having Norm and the other animals deal with climate change. This was terrible because the filmmakers clearly had the whole never punch down fallacy in their heads. Having and climate change be a main focus might make the audience feel bad about themselves. Better to have it appeal to some corporate villain who, of course, doesn't resemble the audience or anyone they know, and as a silly motive nobody in the real world has. In other words, hate the guy at the top but don't feel bad about anything you're doing. Idiocracy does not take this tact. Idiocracy is willing to gore people's sacred cows. Idiocracy is willing to shine a mirror at millions of people and make them question their own lifestyle and make them question the world they're bringing about with their own decisions. Mr. Novick is right that Idiocracy is a cruel movie, but it is cruel for all the right reasons. Brave satire is willing to stick it to large swaths of people. Joe even says so himself in the movie. Just go back, okay? Tell people to read books. Tell people to stay in school, you know, tell people to just use their brains or something. You know, I think maybe the world got like this because of people like me. I, I never did anything with my life. At least you were an artist. Movies that make the audience angry at the producers and possibly the studio is another good reason why Fox probably didn't want to release this movie. Oh, audience anger is a great way to turn a profit, but if it's anger directed at either someone overseas, the rich in your country, something in your family's past or history, something about when you grew up, anger focused on these areas can be profitable, but if you turn the audience to self-doubt and self-reflection, not so much. That's why a few movies do it. Sure, Fox is willing to put their name on comedies where a guy getting kicked in the balls is the highlight, but not on anything that really enrich anyone's life or make them think. <laughs> but Idiocracy does, and that is why it has developed such a large cult following over the years, despite being given every reason to fade into obscurity. And it's also why this is one of my favorite movies of all time. This movie is brilliant. Just brilliant. It's so rare a comedy can come around that's equal parts hilarious and smart. A movie that makes you laugh a lot, as much as it makes you think, and one that does plenty of both. Idiocracy is a wake-up call that it's okay to be smart, and it's okay to feel better about yourself if you're smarter than others. And you should push back against the tide of stupidity. Every scene of this movie is chock full of jokes, many hidden in the background and hard to notice making this a movie that can be rewatched dozens of times and still get something new out of it. This movie gets my highest recommendation imaginable. So what we really learned from Fox hiding of idiocracy is just how true this movie's premise truly was. The public are being fed mind-numbing crap, and there seems to be less and less room for intellectually daring projects like this movie. This review was brought to you by Carl's Juniors. Fuck you, I'm eating. I'm some loudmouth on the internet and you just heard my opinion. I'm fighting. <laughs>